Hi, I'm Chris Killam. As a medicine hunter, I travel all over the world in search of beneficial plants that enhance health and well-being. On this episode of Medicine Trail, we're in the beautiful Southeast Asian country of Malaysia. We're hot on the trail of Tongkat Ali. Tongkat Ali means Ali's walking stick. It's a traditional remedy used for hundreds of years to relieve fevers and malaria, but Tonkat Ali has an even more special purpose that is making it popular all over the world. Tonkat Ali is a supreme sex enhancing agent. It boosts testosterone production in the body, it enhances sex drive in both men and women, and it improves sexual function. On this episode of Medicine Trail, we'll meet scientists, traditional healers, and we'll go into the oldest rainforest in the world where traditional Aboriginal people will harvest the root in the wild. So come along with me on the Medicine Trail. heard of Tonkat Ali? No. 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 Sounds like a drink. Muslim uh, rapper? First thing pops in my head is Tonka trucks. Tonkat Ali? ago I was at a trade show and uh, I don't know whether Annie walked up to me or I, I guess you walked up to me I, I think yeah you walked up to me and um, she was interested in collaborating on promoting this herb and eventually we came to Malaysia and it turned out to be fantastic and everything she said about this plant being really high value and being beneficial and being a huge thing in Malaysia turned out to be Doubly so. Here we are in Kuala Lumpur, beginning our trip here on the uh, medicine trail in search of Tonkat Ali. Thank you, Annie. You're <laughs> The central headquarters of the Malaysian government is located in a place called Putrajaya, about a half hour outside of Kuala Lumpur. We're driving in to meet with Dr. Tasir. He's the head of a government branch called the Malaysian Herbal Corporation. This particular government agency helps to promote Malaysian herbs, especially Tonkat Ali. So we're going to meet with Dr. Tasir and find out a little bit more about their activities and plans for Malaysia's number one botanical. The role for the uh, Tonkat Ali uh, seen in the, in the traditional sense has always been uh, a natural product that helps to contribute to the general health of the population. I would like to see Tonkat Ali doing um, a very positive impact uh, socially, particularly in terms of rural population. As economies develop, we tend to move into the manufacturing and industrialization part of the economy. In this case, the growth of the local herbal industry can actually help to ensure that the rural population actively participate in the growth of the economy. This morning finds us in Perak State, which is in the northern part of Malaysia. We're only about an hour's drive from the Thai border. We're on our way to an Oring Osli settlement. They're the aboriginal people of the Malay Peninsula. We're going to meet with them, spend a little bit of time with them at their village, and then head on into the rainforest to see how they do the traditional wild harvesting of Tonkat Ali root.
as you can see, this Oring Osley settlement is pretty poor. The people don't have a lot by way of amenities. They certainly don't have a lot by way of income. The primary income that they derive is from the harvesting of Tonkadali root. This is really true for medicinal plants everywhere, that it's the native people in many of the countries that I visit and that we visit who are responsible for the whole field side of harvesting or cultivating and otherwise obtaining different medicinal plants. Uh, here at this Oring Osley settlement, these people rely on buyers to come to them once, twice a month, say, we need a certain number of kilos of Tonkadali root. Then these people go out into the forest. They perform the very difficult and, and admittedly dangerous labor of harvesting these roots. And eventually, the material that they pull out of the oldest rainforest in the world winds up in modern products that you might be able to walk into a natural food store in North America and purchase off the shelf. Okay, boys and girls, why do they call this a rainforest? Guess why? Because it rains here, like, all the time. We got ourselves all set and ready to go into the forest, and now it's pouring like crazy. We are, of course, hoping that this will blow over. In any case, we're going to be hiking through a very wet forest, but this is why it's called a rainforest. We've stopped at the side of the road. We see a path that's cut into the forest for a little bit. So this will be our point of entry into the forest, up into the hills, to go find a mature Tonkadali tree so we can harvest the root. So you can see how this is really done. Okay. And this is a rubber plantation. See this tree? How it's been cut repeatedly? It's to collect latex. There's none in here right now. But this is rubber collection. All these trees. Havea brasiliensis, rubber in all, the, all directions around here. Just think, we could be sitting in front of our computers today. <laughs> Instead, we're in the rainforest. You gotta love this. This is privileged work. All right, so we got a pretty big Tonkadali tree here. What's going to happen is they're going to clear all this debris out from around here, make some working space. Then they're going to start digging into the ground to clear away hillside near the root. Then what they're going to have to do is actually chop the root out of the ground, which is just crazy labor. I mean, it's like coal mining here. These guys felled this tree and were able to get about, oh, four, maybe four and a half feet of heavy old root. There's even more buried in the ground. Just can't get at it because it's completely packed in by rocks. Uh, but they've got about 25 kilos or so of root here. And uh, you just kind of never know what's going to happen when you're harvesting plants in the wild. You've seen something that people don't get to see unless they hike into the Malaysian rainforest. You've seen the Oring Osley harvesting a Tonkadali root. This is how the herb trade happens. A lot of hard labor to provide the health products that people use all over the world. Toto, we are not in Kansas anymore. This roadside sign says danger, wild elephant crossing. And when they say danger, they mean it. Don't think circus elephants that take peanuts from your hands. Think big, angry, wild elephants that would just as happily stamp your car to pieces. 
The Malaysian rainforest is filled with wildlife, wild elephants, tigers and snakes. It's all happening here in the rainforest. We're on our way to Banting to see the Golden Hope Tonkin Ali Plantation. The future of Tonkin Ali from a commercial standpoint is not in wild harvesting from the rainforest, it's cultivation. So we're going to go to the Golden Hope Plantation and see what they're up to. Harry, you're the research officer here at the Golden Hope Plantation. What does that mean besides the fact that you spend a lot of time in the hot sun? Oh, I'm doing uh, this. I'm focused on how to plant herbs in a big scale and also to plant the physiology of the plants before we uh, interpret it into the big scale planting. So you figure out how to make this all work? Yes. Oh, that's great. This is a tiny little Tonkin Ali seedling here. We're in the nursery at uh, Golden Hope where they are cultivating seedlings. Now, how old are these? This is around six months here. Uh, six months old. Six month old Tonkin Ali seedlings. And at what point will you plant these in the ground? Uh, this, uh, after six months, normally we'll transfer to the field. Now, will we be able to save this after I'm done playing with it? Yeah, yeah. So this will grow up to be a good, healthy tree? Yes. I'll give it back to you then. Okay, thank you. So I hate to waste a good tree. I will name it after your name. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay. How old is this Tonkadali tree? This is around one year plus. One year plus? Yes, one okay. Year plus. And why is it in this cylinder? This is because we want to, to study the, the roots development of this plant. You want to study the yes. root development? Yes. Okay. Because, I mean, when you look at this, okay. what do you learn? From here, we can study the, the first is the mass production of the roots. Yeah. From Tonka Ali. Yes. We plant in the uh, open area because normally people know that Tonka Ali in the wild, in the forest condition, but now we try to cultivate it in the commercial base, in the commercial basis in the open right. area. Right. So we can see the effect. How old? How old are these trees? Around two years. Two years? They look healthy. They look healthy. Are you collecting all of the fruits from yeah. the trees yeah. for more cultivation? Yes. We also we produce a good environmentally uh, products because we are not wild crafting. We are planting and also we introduce organic farming in our... So you're not applying pesticides and fungicides no. to no. this? No. You see, and that's really critical. I mean, I, I'm very much against the application of toxic chemicals yeah, that are yeah. going to wind up in the food chain and poison people's bodies and cause cancer. Yeah. So anytime mm -hmm. a large entity mm -hmm. like Golden Hope mm -hmm. undertakes organic cultivation, yeah. okay. it's not only good for the market in terms of the finished product, but yeah. it's also it's, it's taking a leadership position. Yeah. So is this the root you're going to harvest? Yeah. So my work is here. Okay. Yeah. Now that's bitter. <laughs> that's really bitter. <laughs> For traditional use purposes, if the Oring Osley want to use uh, Tonkadali root, then wild harvesting in the forest is totally viable. But in terms of meeting the uh, international, increasing international consumer demand for Tonkadali on a large scale, um, wild harvesting in the rainforest uh, will prove destructive. Increasing the popularity of Tonkadali also means ensuring that there's good cultivation of this species so that we're not damaging a precious rainforest environment. boats on Lake Temengor. It's a huge man-made lake in the northern part of Malaysia, right near the Thai border. We're going to go check out a kampong, a traditional Oring Osli village. We're also going to see some Tonkadali trees. Should be a fantastic day out here in the tropics on this lake.
kind of dragging their house along. That's very cool. As we've been cruising along the different islands on Lake Temengor, we've been spotting Tonkadali trees on the shores. This one here, it's kind of get, it's beautiful because it's right on the edge of the island so we can see it clearly. It has the characteristic leaf structure, which is the giveaway that it's a Tonkadali tree. This was all connected land, and now these pieces of land are separate. Each of these little islands will develop a sort of a unique ecosystem all its own. You think there were a lot more uh, Tonkadali trees on this island at one time? At one time, yes. Yeah. It's more numerous, but not because of the chalet. Yeah. The few is left. Okay, so as they've been building different little places on this island, they've yes. been cutting these down. I'll give you my camera. Hey man, you got a leech on your neck. Turn that way. See, leech, all God's creatures got to eat. Leeches eat our blood. You can't feel them on you, but you have to get them off. So just let me get this little, oh, he's hanging on. Wait a second. Yeah, they hang on. They suck your blood. They make you bleed. And now he's stuck to my finger. All right. They're tenacious little devils. Now he's stuck to my, see, that's a leech. They will get on your skin, suck your blood, and become really big. They become engorged with blood. But we'll just send that one free. Nature offers endless beauty. We hiked into the Malaysian rainforest, and our reward, besides the beauty all around us, is this waterfall. There are millions of reasons to preserve the natural environment. There is no beauty like the beauty of nature. There's nothing anywhere near as majestic. Look at this. What more needs be said? You know, it used to be that about 14% of the world's surface was covered by rainforests. Now, less than 6% of the Earth is rainforest, and that amount is dwindling quickly, mostly due to logging. I know that people need wood, I know that people need timber, but logging the rainforests of the world is not the answer. Once these places are destroyed, they're gone for good. Logging the rainforest is a bad idea. It's short money and it's long-term environmental damage. We're coming up on an island that has a small Oring Osley village. This island is way out of the way in the northern part of Lake Temengor. We're gonna meet these people and see how they live in this completely remote spot in the world. It doesn't fit my head, actually. <laughs> I think I need to either shrink my head or get a bigger hat. Who do, who do I pay for this little thing? Okay, boys and girls, this is a cautionary moment here. These are poisonous darts. This black material at the end of this darts, absolutely deadly. If you encounter native people with poisonous darts, don't play with them, don't stick them in your thigh, don't jab them in your face, because these will kill you. So one dart's good for one good-sized monkey. Keep that in mind when you're out blow dart hunting in the Malaysian rainforest. The dance that we're seeing here is performed for healing purposes and also performed when somebody dies. Uh, when somebody dies, this will be performed continually for a week, and nobody in the village works for one month after a person has died. So that's a, a very like significant commitment they make to the community culture. We've been 
very warmly greeted here, shown wonderful hospitality, and we've seen some customs that are disappearing all over the world. It's very, very fortunate. It's a real pleasure and privilege to come to a place like this. We consider the rainforest in Malaysia as an uh, international heritage, not only one for Malaysia. The world should benefit from this. So it's a matter of how do we, we harness the wealth in terms of genetics and in terms of the diversity that we have in this forest. Mm -hmm. So we are looking forward to benefit humankind on, on this particular wealth that we now are custodian of. At this typical home in the Malaysian countryside, these people are growing some Tonkadali trees for personal use in the future. The wild harvesting of Tonkadali is not sustainable if this herb really catches on around the world. In 12 years or so, this tree will yield a 35 or 40 kilo root, which will be good for a lot of personal use. This helps to hedge against the potential environmental damage that could arise from excess popularity of this plant and harvesting in the wild. If there were a safe, natural aphrodisiac, would you consider using such a thing? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> no. Yeah. I mean, I, I would. Sure? Possibly. Yes, I would. Sure. <laughs> yes. We're right off the highway at a gas stand that has some restaurants and shops. And here, these Oring Osli people have an herbal stall with all different kinds of traditional remedies in their raw form and also in capsule. Annie, this is a far cry from the uh, way that you sell Tonkat Ali, isn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> this is the raw root. This would ideally, uh, for, for modern use purposes, be uh, chopped up and then extracted and concentrated. But here you see it being sold in its raw root form. Here we've got, uh, again, Tonkat Ali, but this time in chips. What do you think would be the typical way people will use this? Will they boil this as a tea? Yeah, they would typically boil this into a concoction yeah. and then drink it. The most popular product being so, of course, is Tonkat Ali. Okay, so Tonkat Ali is number one. I, I want to know why is it the most popular product? Mengapa um, orang beli tongkat Ali? Uh, macam tu, lelaki ke dalam makan biasa untuk uh, kesihatan for you know sexual health and yeah. um, people also buy it for general health. What's interesting is that in this very mainstream setting with uh, convenience stores and gas stalls, you also have fruit stands behind us and you have these traditional herbal preparations. So you can either make your own, as in the case of the chips of the raw Tonkadali root, or you can buy these uh, encapsulated finished herbal products for your own ready use at home. All right, what do we got here? Oh man, this stuff is called dragon fruit. Dragon fruit. So how are we? Sp okay, I guess there's only one way here. Oh, oh, that is great. We're uh, north of Kuala Lumpur, about an hour and a half now in Ipoh on our way to meet a traditional BOMO, a healer named Kak Yang. Local healers are pretty much the doctors of small rural communities, uh, as they always have been throughout time. Kak Yang has a lot of people who come to her with different health complaints, whether it's uh, that they want to lose weight or they have headaches all the time or they're uh, sexually less vital than they used to be or they can't sleep, whatever. And so it's her job as um, someone in a, in a long line of family herbalists to figure out what they need and then make the appropriate formulas for them. Hey, Kak Hello. Yang, good Hello. to see you again. How are you? Fine, thank you. 
Thanks for having us here. It's good to be back. Yeah. It's been a few years. Yes, yes. Yeah, uh, Chris, I would like to show you how to how we uh, Malay um, uh, make uh, tongka ali mm -hmm. uh, plus the herbs, all kinds of herbs. And we firstly we do it, we chop it, and then we fry. After that, we grind it until it be uh, small pieces and uh, until it looks like a uh, powder mm -hmm. and then uh, we can eat it. So uh, I would like to show you today. Okay, wonderful. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. So these are all the herbs that are going to go into the wok. Yes. This is going to make the herbs more brittle so they'll be easier to pound up. Yes, that's right. I take it you can't do this in a microwave. So now you scoop these uh, crispy herbs into this round wooden vessel mm -hmm. here and you yes. pound. Uh -huh. So you don't need to go work out at a gym because you do this all the time, right? <laughs> That's why you have strong arms. <laughs> you always do it the traditional way. You never cheat and use a machine when we're not around. <laughs> you have some big grinding machine in a garage someplace? <laughs> no. See, we got all this powdered herb. This is just so much pounding involved. And this is a very, very fine screen. Mm, yeah. Then we can eat this. You want to we try? can eat this? Do so I want to try? <laughs> Oh, absolutely, you know? All right. Oh, yeah. Mm, very, very, very dry. <laughs> mm, it's a little spicy. It doesn't taste bad. Um, I mean, you know, I wouldn't eat this by the, the handful, but it's all right. So we've done it here. We've uh, seen the herbs. We've chopped them up, uh, fried them in a wok, powdered them. Now we've got a finished product, and this you will um, give to people for improving their overall vitality and energy and sexual health yes, and all that. Fantastic, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much. Here, we're very far from the rainforest. We're in a whole other world of activity. Tonkadali root is ground up into fine particles. It's boiled in these huge extraction tanks. It's put into a screw press where it's squeezed. Then the liquid that remains is concentrated down into a goo. That goes into a freeze dryer for a couple of days. It comes out as a hard cake. That gets powdered, and then it's ready to be put into supplement products and beverages, Tonkadali products of all different kinds. This is how traditional plant remedies get transformed into modern products. This one is an uh, incoming raw material we receive from the farmer from the outside. After we grind to become a three milli, that means we go to the crushing machine, we crush until three milli. So this you can see a the... difference. The raw material is quite big, and we reduce the size to three milli. It's a little dusty in there. No, it's a lot dusty in there. I was going to go in and stand beside the machine, but I have changed my mind. The Tonkadali root has just been extracted. And now it's going through this screw press, and the press is squeezing the water out of these Tonkadali root particles. This is not beef gravy. This is super concentrated Tonkadali extract. Now what's gonna happen with this goo? They mean they, from the, they yeah. mean they go to this machine, they mean they, be, they make a concentrate 50%. They mean the final product is become 50% concentrate here. So this is the concentrated extract before yes, it gets yes. freeze dried? Yes, correct. Have you ever tried it like this? No, we cannot very, what do you call it? We cannot read, we can try. I am intrepid, I will try anything. 
Para Ruiz Brown. Wow, now like that's some incredibly bitter talk at Ali. You'd rather chew a whole root any day. That's super bitter. This is the last step in the processing of the Tonkadali extract here. The goo, the gravy that we were playing with before, gets put into this. It gets freeze dried and concentrated down. And now we'll see what it looks like when it comes out of the freeze dryer. And here is the finished recipe. A hundred times the weight of this in Tonkadali root to make this concentrated extract. Yes. That's a lot of Tonkadali. We're going to go in and see the uh, manufacturing of the capsules. I have to put on all kinds of uh, garb here. Here we go. So this is the finished product here. All of the extraction, the milling, the boiling, the gravy, the freeze drying, it all adds up to a finished product in a bottle. No, 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 I'm not good at this. Oh! There's a hole there. I'm helping. I think what is most needed in terms of uh, introducing Tonkat Ali, for that matter, and other herbs into the mainstream healthcare will have to be based on efficacy and toxicity studies. So clinical trials will be the paramount factor in, this, in making that such a decision. at the Damai Hospital in Kuala Lumpur. Many of the medical doctors here specialize in sexual and reproductive function issues. We're here today to meet with Dr. Ishmael Tambi. He is the foremost medical researcher into the benefits of Tonkat Ali. He's proven that Malaysia's number one most popular herb improves testosterone production, boosts sex drive in both men and women, and improves sexual function. We're going to meet the medical doctor of Tonkat Ali. The first study we did, uh, we found that the testosterone level of the guys who were on Tonkat Ali were elevated. Interestingly, we found that Tonkat Ali lowered the sex hormone binding globulin. And that is very interesting because just imagine as we grow older and older, our sex hormone binding globulin goes higher and it usually uses up all the free testosterone. But Tonkat Ali reduced sex hormone binding globulin. It means that we have got extra testosterone in our body. I, I thought all the while that it's only, uh, it's only aphrodisiac, but it's beyond that actually. And in fact, the, the su subsequent study which we did, we found that it has got a lot of other beneficial effects. I'm looking at it as something that is holistic. It's, it's something like modulate, you know, it modulates your system, it enhances your system, it maintains and probably it vitalized, energized. I'm looking at a, a, some kind of, some kind of a miracle or a magic uh, stuff, you know, that, that, really, that, that really bring you up uh, to wellness. The busiest market in all of Kuala Lumpur is called Chow Kit. There's everything here, including hundreds of Tonkat Ali products plus dried herbs, other traditional remedies. This is the market. This is the place to go. So come on with me. We're going to check this out and see what's here, Tonkat Ali-wise, at Chow Kit. Yes, you like? Thank you. You might think that the big red ones would be the real killer chilies. And I can tell you that these little guys will blow your head off. These are Pekin chilies. They're ex extremely hot. And no, I'm not going to eat one on camera. There's a whole stack of Tonkat Ali beverages here. Andy, can you pull one out of that open case there? Actually, the coffee one, too. I want to try the coffee. That tastes good. 
I mean, it's a little bitter, but Tonkin Ali's bitter. Now, this is Tonkin Ali coffee, coffee in a can, a concept I've never really kind of like gotten hold of here. Mm. If anybody's thinking this is going to replace my morning coffee, they're sorely disappointed. But, uh, you know, it's Tonkin Ali and it's, um, hey, try it. <laughs> I would drink it. She would drink it. That's why the beverage exists. Because different people have different tastes. Okay, now this is extra power. Smells like juicy fruit gum. That's good. Juicy fruit gum in a can. Okay, um, uh, Kool-Aid, think, um, mm, Tonkin Ali Kool-Aid. That's what I'm thinking. The deal with the Tonkin Ali beverages is they all have a little bit of bitter. The extra power one has a little bit of extra bitter. The coffee is just plain nasty. And, um, you know, theoretically, minutes or hours from now, I'll just be bouncing off the walls with energy and wanting a date tonight. Okay, from the Medicine Hunter X-Files here, crocodile penis. I pity the crocodiles who donated for the cause. Annie, what in the world do we do with dried crocodile penis? Well, enhancing sexual... Ability. Enhancing sexual abilities, so you just kind of like gnaw on one of these. But anyway, theoretically, then it you know gives you the the sturdiness and the turgidity you need to follow through in the course of an evening. Too weird for me. Okay, this is without question the strangest and most dangerous fruit in the world. This is the durian. These spikes are razor sharp. You work in a durian plantation. One of these falls on you, you're a goner. Durians are strange. People are either completely addicted to them or can't tolerate them. They taste and smell like an equal mix of exotic flowers and rotting garbage. Uh, they're kind of custardy inside, which only adds to the mystique. Some people claim they're aphrodisiac. I don't imagine how in the world that could be possible. Uh, and there are a lot of hotels that won't let you eat durians in the room because the smell never goes away. Ah, fantastic. Voila. You know, this like really hurts to hold this thing. <laughs> it's like holding a handful of needles. Durian. Oh, yeah, man. Really, really, um, I'd love to be able to share it with you. All right, so this looks like uh, some very, like extraterrestrial Tonkin Ali balls. Oh, oh, all right. You know, this is going to be gross. <laughs> Oh, it's not bad, actually. It's kind of like um, really nasty curry-flavored chewing gum. Oh, this is good. Ah. <laughs> oh, I feel better already. Oh, this place looks good over here. Long Jack, that's also Tonka Dali. This is a different name. Oh, yeah, this one we saw before. This is their most popular Tonka Dali product. Do you drink this stuff? This one? What does it do for you? What does it do for you? It makes him want to do the Tarzan yell, is what I'm kind of getting from the body language. Look, they got more beverages here, too. This is one funky little restaurant we found ourselves in. This is also in Chow Kit Market. Uh, we stopped to get some te tarik. It's kind of a way that they prepare tea, but they pull it from way up in the air. It's sort of a theatrical way to do it. The guys are going to have the men's tea, which contains Tonkin Ali, and it seems thematically kind of consistent with what's going on here today in our quest to find Tonkin Ali products and beverages at Chow Kit. If you really want to see the heart of a place, Go to the markets, always. That's where you find the most life, the most people, the most variety. The Chow Kit Market in Kuala Lumpur totally rocks. Not only do I get to investigate beneficial plant medicines that affect people's health and meet traditional indigenous native people, but I also get to come to wild places like this. This is the Batu Caves outside of Kuala Lumpur. Think of it as kind of like a, you know, Hindu Disneyland. It's got Hindu temples all around this wild statue behind me. 
and a gigantic cave that we're going to go inside with monkeys and a deep inside it there's another Hindu temple. It doesn't get better than this. So you can think of this as sort of a, uh, you know, Batu fitness program. I don't know how many steps, there are hundreds and hundreds, but if you did this every day, you'd be in fantastic cardiovascular shape. You know, there are lots of monkeys at this cave. It seems to be a theme. Almost any place I go where there's a Hindu temple, there'll be monkeys. They're just hanging out, waiting for a handout. People bring them popcorn and coconuts, and they love it. Who knows how old this cave is? Probably millions of years. But there's a steady dripping from the roof of the cave, adding to the limestone formations. And the place is filled with monkeys. You throw a little popcorn down, a coconut, they just go wild for it. We would like the world to, to come to Malaysia not just to consume the products that are coming out from this, but to come to Malaysia and see the growth of some of these herbs in its natural habitat. And to come to Malaysia to see how we do the processing and how we actually educate our young and the professionals into handling and managing this very interesting product from the Malaysian forest. Would you recommend such a thing to friends? Well, we need to try it first then. Well, why not? Of course, yes, of yeah. course. Why not? You know, there's, the, the world needs some more love and physical love, so, you know, why the hell not? As we've seen on this episode of Medicine Trail, Tonkin Ali is an important medicinal plant to the people of Malaysia. It's been used for centuries to relieve fever and malaria. It possesses powerful sex-enhancing properties, and people use it every day to boost energy and stamina. It's made its way into all kinds of popular products, including common beverages. We've gone to the oldest rainforest in the world, where Tonkin Ali is harvested by native people in the wild, and we've seen it transformed into a scientifically accurate extract in a modern processing facility. The future for Tonkin Ali? It's unlimited. I'm Chris Killam. Thank you for watching Medicine Trail. Remember, we're all one humanity, one tribe, one vibe. I said, do you use Tonkin Ali? Yeah. Tonka yeah. Ali. Yeah. I don't use Tonkin Ali, man. Oh. I'm too powerful. You're too powerful. Yeah, no need to use Tonkin Ali. I see, okay. Yeah. Do you know of Tonkin Ali? Oh, yes, I know Tonkin Ali. Do you use Tonkin Ali on a regular basis? Yes, I use Tonkin Ali every day. And what does it do for you? It helps to keep me beautiful and it gives me energy. Thank you very much for talking with us. <laughs> well, these guys aren't paying any attention. I'm just going to take this pallet of Tonkin Ali waste. I don't know whether or not I'll get it through the customs, but if I do, I'll have Tonkin Ali for the rest of my life. Hunter.